Good evening, Aggie fans, and welcome back to another Aggie podcast. My name is Brian Holloway. I'll be your host tonight. We've got an action-packed show for you tonight. It's very exciting. Uh, we're going to bring on North Carolina a and head baseball coach, Ben Hall. Aggies off to a great, great start, off to their best start uh, since they joined the Division One Division One in 1971. Uh, got off to a hot start, 17-7. and seven. Uh, They're 2-1 and one in the CAA, got two road wins uh, over the weekend against the College of Charleston, one of the better baseball teams uh, in the CAA. And this weekend, they're going to welcome in UNC Wilmington, another outstanding team in the conference, one of the better conferences in college baseball. But the Aggies are off to an outstanding start. And then we're going to bring in Tawana Tweet Cook, uh, a name from the past, one of the all-time greats in North Carolina a and women's basketball. She's the second all-time leading scorer, the all-time leading assist person for North Carolina a and And her team actually – uh, won two games in WNIT in 2010. So we're going to kind of get her memories and kind of get her excitement about what the current team is doing and, and the fact that they could go on to the uh, Elite Eight in the WNIT. Uh, that team went to the uh, Super 16. They beat Wake Forest, they beat Charlotte, and then they lost at Miami. And so uh, outstanding program for the North Carolina a women's basketball team over the last 20 years. And certainly Tawana Cook was a part of that, probably a future North Carolina a and Sports Hall of Famer. So excited to talk to her uh, about that. Uh, exciting uh, weekend. Softball is here this weekend as well. We have a doubleheader against Hampton on Good Friday. Uh, and then they have a single game coming up on Saturday. So uh, North Carolina a and softball team looking for his first uh, CAA win. And so we're certainly looking forward to that. North Carolina a and track and field will be up in Raleigh this weekend for the Raleigh Relays at NC State. And so certainly wishing them the best. Uh, the North Carolina a and men's indoor team coming off a second place finish uh, in the CAA uh, and the women coming off a sixth place finish. And so we're hoping to improve on that. So they'll be in Raleigh this weekend. And then let's talk about North Carolina a and bowling. Uh, Heartbreaking loss uh, over the weekend uh, in Raleigh as well. Uh, they missed out on a chance to win four straight uh, MEAC bowling championships. Man, what a historic uh, occasion that would have been. You would have had a couple of young ladies, uh, namely Melanie Caden and Lori Tomaszewski, winning uh, championships all four years when they were here at North Carolina a and Very rare, but uh, UMEA, UMEA, UMEA. Excuse me, Maryland Eastern Shore, you mean, you mean ES, uh, certainly hats off to them uh, for the victory. They, they beat us uh, on Sunday in a best out of seven, four to two. Uh, so the UMES is going to the NCAAs, and so is North Carolina AT. AT, the fourth overall seed uh, in the NCAA tournament, uh, coming up April 4th through 6th. They made it out to uh, the Arlington region, and so they will play the winner of Alabama State and Belmont Abbey. Uh, on April 5th in Arlington, Texas. And certainly they were out there earlier this season at the ITRC uh, training facility uh, in Arlington, Texas. And so they'll return out there trying to bring home a national championship with the NCAAs and also trying to bring home a national championship with the Inter uh, International Team Championship. So they have an opportunity to win two national championships. So, so we are certainly hoping uh, that will be the case with the North Carolina a and bowling team. Again, they will Face the winner of Alabama State and Belmont Abbey, uh, Louisiana Tech, Arkansas State, also in that region. Two very tough teams, two teams that AT is used to playing in the NCAA tournament. Arkansas State went to the championship final a year ago before losing to uh, the eventual champion, Vanderbilt. So 18 teams uh, will buy for a national championship out in Arlington, Texas. And uh, like I said, AT, the number fourth, number four overall seed uh, behind. Uh, Jacksonville State behind uh, Youngstown State and Arkansas State. So certainly uh, uh, going to be an exciting time. I think I said Louisiana uh, Tech and Sam Houston is out in that region with North Carolina a and not Arkansas State, but Sam Houston State is out in that region. Arkansas State is the number two overall seed. So certainly going to be a fun time for the North Carolina a and bowling team. And then we have the spring game, football game, uh, coming up on April 13th at 1 p.m. And so certainly excited about that. But let's talk a little baseball uh, with North Carolina a and head coach Ben Hall. Uh, his team takes on UNC Wilmington uh, this weekend. And on Saturday, we'll be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the 1974 MEAC Conference Championship team. Also is the second annual baseball reunion. 
uh, had a lot of fun out there last year. Uh, the guys uh, really uh, did a great job of rooting us on uh, to victory. Uh, the crowd was great. The atmosphere was great. So hats off to the North Carolina a and baseball alumni. Looking forward uh, to seeing those guys again this weekend, looking for them to kind of give that extra boost, that extra energy. Uh, I saw what it's meant to the women's basketball team, just the atmosphere and the energy. And so hopefully they'll be good for two runs for us on Saturday. And uh, But the series opens up on Friday, 6 o'clock p.m. Coach, welcome to the Aggie broadcast again, man. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. You know, obviously excited to be on and exciting time of year for us in, in the sport of baseball. Today's opening day. It's a holiday <laughs> for us. So, you know, we're all going to be huddled around the TV tonight watching all the major league teams open up the season. So, but, uh, but yes, sir, man, excited to, to be off to a good start and, you know, looking forward to a big, big weekend this weekend. Oh, no question about it, man. What does opening day mean for you? I mean, you're a baseball guy. I mean, you, you, you know, you kind of, uh, yeah, it's in your DNA. So what, yeah. uh, what does opening day kind of mean for you um, when, when it comes back around and, you know, certainly, certainly spring training is one thing, but opening day, right. it's gotta be. It, just, it, it, uh, it is. It has a holiday feel to it. You, you know, you, when you're a kid, you wait all year for Christmas and, <laughs> you know, and you, 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 the night before Christmas, you can't sleep and, and, and baseball, it's the same way you spend, you know, all year, you know, obviously you're a fan of sport and all the other sports, but it's just like you're counting down the days until, you know, you're able to to get a full slate of baseball on the TV, you know, week in, week out. And, and, it, and obviously it's the major league opening day. So, you know, all the greatest athletes in the world, the best baseball players in the world all get cranked up today. And so uh, just an exciting time. And then, you know, for us in college baseball, we're, we're over a third of the way, you know, going to be creeping up on the halfway point of the season here in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, it's it's definitely baseball uh, full tilt right now, for sure. No question about it. And uh, let's talk about your team. 17 and seven uh, off to a hot start. Started 10 and two. Then you won two out of three last weekend uh, at Charleston. Uh, what have you liked about the team thus far this season? What uh what kind of the things that you're looking at that you kind of uh, are smiling at? Yeah, just Nate. Well, for one, they've just been a joy to coach, and and it really started this fall. Uh, we we you know we we're looking at the roster. You've got an older team, and in every program in the country that has older players, you you have different challenges that come with that, and and not every team gets it right. You know when you have veteran players, but. You know, I think we we started to realize midway through the fall doing some of the things we were doing and and the buy in that we were getting from older guys who've been around a long time that, man, we, we got a chance to be OK if if the ball bounces our way, the guys stay healthy and they keep you know buying in at the level they're, that they were at the time. And, you know, and you go through your fall period and, you know, you're instilling the fundamentals every every year the same way you do. But when you have veteran players that have been there before that, that have had failure, but also had success, you know, have had a year's taste of a CAA and then you're, you're implementing some, some team things to build team and, and some toughness and some expectations of the style of play. You know, when you start to see it come out or as early as it has in the season this year, that that's when it gets exciting. You know, there's a lot of seasons where you're, you're spending the first month and a half trying to figure out who your team is and what, and what, you know, what they're going to do and what they can rely on. And I feel like this team, you know, did a really good job, you know, kind of buying into what we felt like we were going to have to do and really going out and making it happen early and really giving us a chance to, to start to see like what our route is to win baseball games, you know, right away. And I think that's been really fun to be a part of. You mentioned the CAA. I'm curious. You play in the CAA a year ago. Was there some things that you learned about the league? I mean, of course, the conversation is always how tough the league is. And then they added Campbell uh, as yeah. if they were doing you a favor. Um, so were there some things that you learned during that year that you kind of took into the offseason and says, OK, these are kind of some of the things that we are going to need to be able to have in order to compete with uh, absolutely. Uh, this team? Yeah, I mean you, I mean it, it, you just when you move up in 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 levels of Division One baseball and the competition level goes to a fever pitch, where you just 
there are no light days. There are no bad teams. You know, every team is coached well. You know, every team wins in different ways, you know, and and um, I think we found out last year how hard it is to win on the road. That was a big challenge and hurdle we didn't really get over last year. Uh, we found out how difficult it is to win up north in the northern division teams. That's something that has always been tough in the CAA for the southern teams um, and how to respect every opponent. You know, I think that's one thing our, that we, we learned really well last year that, you know, you go up north and you think, well, you're a southern team. We're going to be fine. And then you, you find out they can play a really high level brand of baseball up there, too. And so, um, you know, the pitch in depth is, is, is exponentially higher than, than, you know, our program's ever seen. But, you know, I do, I do think we did things well last year. We were very competitive for the most part. And I think our guys got a good understanding. And, and you heard it from them in the offseason going into this year. You know, you meet with the players. You have your end of the fall meetings like, all right, how do you feel about it? And almost all of them are coming in saying, you know, last year it's like we walked into the ballpark. We're like, all right, can we play with these guys? Mm. And then they would get about midway through the series. And they're like, yeah, we, we can do this, you know, but you're a game and a half in already. And and I think they knew with the, with what we had back and, you know, what we brought in and, you know, the depth and, and the offensive ability that we've had in our lineup with the experience you know, got guys that have been there before that they're kind of that talk is like, now we know what to expect. Like we're good. We know what we need to do. We just got to be consistent and keep growing and, and being in, in, in a growth mindset every week. And, and then, and then for us, a big challenge and we did it this fall is we, we need to go learn how to play on the road. And so, you know, when I met with, with Mr. Hilton, I said, you know, we need to travel this fall. So we played both of our, both of our exhibition games in the fall. We're on the road. Uh, we scheduled two more road series, you know, in this non-conference schedule to really challenge our team uh, to get on a bus or get on a flight and go into another park and play in somebody else's, you know, home setting and figure out how to do it better than we did last year. And I think we've we've passed, you know, that with flying colors so far, been really excited to see the kind of the fruits of that labor a little bit. Let's stay with your offseason a little bit, uh, because you come off that CAA year, like you said, you guys play some really tough games against some really tough opponents. Then you lose your your pitching coach, a guy that you've had for a very, very long time. So that's yeah. got to be a transition for you. Uh, yeah. You lose Meacham to the uh, MLB draft uh, as well. Uh, what were kind of your 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 thought process as you okay as we build this team? you know, what went into the the pitching staff and hiring the pitching coach and all those kind of things as you processed all of that? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously when you lose a, a coach, it's been a part of really everything that we've done up until this point, you know, turning the program around originally and then, you know, winning a MEAC title and, you know, and he did a great job of producing and we produced some great pitching staffs here. You know, well, we had four pitchers drafted in six years and, you know, we did some great things. And, and, and as anybody says, at some point, all good things come to an end. And he had a great opportunity. And your first instinct is to, you know, to get on the horn, talk to people you trust. You know, let's let's find the best fit, you know, both in what you want to teach and what you want to preach on the mound. And as far as your pitching staff as a whole, you know, and but also get, um, you know, a guy that fits, you know, in, in, in a sense of, you um, you know, staff dynamics relating to the guys, you know, and I think when when Forrest came about, we talked about it as a staff with Coach Allred, our current staff that was here already, and it was just a slam dunk. You know, the guy, he, he had spent some time at, at Savannah State in his career, um, worked under uh, one of the best pitching coaches in college baseball at Middle Tennessee State, and, and he, he had already had an opportunity to run his own pitching staff at Eastern Illinois, and which was a regional team. You know, and it's like, man, you know, here he is, a young guy. He knows what he's doing. He's ran, he's run a pitching staff that's pitched in a regional already this past year, and so it's just been a huge fit. And I think, and I think he's he's messed really well with the guys and um, has brought the right uh, temperament and the in the way he goes about his business and what he's teaching and asking of the players. Um, and so I think that's been a great fit, and I think that's why we're seeing some guys do do so well right now for sure. Um, 
but I think, you know, a big tip obviously goes to the players, you know, when in this new era we're in, in the transfer portal, you know, uh, late junior college recruiting transfers, you know, it, it is a wild west of, it's like a big sprint during June and July to figure out, you know, what your roster is going to look like. And we've just found a, we feel like we found a good niche for us and what helps us as far as that transfer market. You know, we haven't had much success in the division one portal, but we have had a lot of success finding some junior college guys that have been lost in the shuffle. And, and some of those guys have made, I've already made huge impacts in, in, in this year. And so, um, and then I think the last thing pitching wise is just for us to be really good at, you know, don't not trying to put a square peg in a circle hole, you know, let's really sit this fall. You got a new pitching coach, you got new, everything's new. Everybody starts fresh and let's see what this pitching staff develops into. And, um, They've done a great job, and and it's different. You know, we don't have a an Evan Gates at the end of the game where you just you know you give him 15 games and he closes 15 games. You know, I, but I think we're a little deeper and we have a little bit more ability in some other areas that you know maybe last year we were kind of stuck with using one or two bullpen arms in certain you know um, opportunities. And and right now it's you know I'm able to sit in there with Coach Arnold during the game and like you know maybe it's maybe it's important we use. Angel Ortiz in the sixth, you know, or maybe we move a guy and use him later in the game. It's just about, you know, putting the guys in the best position for them to be successful for what they bring to the table and and then continue to motivate them to grow and get better, you know, week in and week out. All right. Give some shout outs here. Warren Mitchell, big baseball guy, played baseball back in the 80s for North Carolina A&T. Warren, we need you at the baseball games to do your boo thing that you do at the basketball <laughs> games. But uh, big Warren Mitchell, shout out to him. Lonnie Shaw. Another big baseball fan uh, from North Carolina a and Love the walk-off. I don't think it was Robert Morris. I think it was George Mason. Different name, you know, uh, George instead of Robert. But uh, still a big-time blast by Michael Logan. That was fun uh, to watch. Kermit Jimerson, looking forward to the William & Mary series in Williamsburg, Virginia. Looks like he's going to check you out up there, Coach. Uh, and then Amos, uh, loving the War Boys. That's yeah. the name just catching on on Flow Sports, so uh, we call it the war, the war boys, man, but uh, certainly thank you for listening, uh, Amos, man. Hopefully you can catch us uh, this weekend, Friday, 6 p.m. start uh, against UNC Wilmington, Saturday, 2 p.m. start, and then 1 p.m. start on uh, Sunday. Uh, let's You talk about the transfer portal uh, a little bit, and throughout college athletics, I think the prevailing notion is that you, you have to be experienced, like you the days of kind of taking a young team and, and trying to work with those guys are kind of over and you really need to be older. Is that the case in baseball? I don't want to make an assumption. Is that the case in baseball? Because I look at Nagishi, I look at Logan, you look at Brown. These are all old Coley, uh, Kilpatrick. These are all older guys yeah. uh, that have been around for a while. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, I mean, it's it obviously is hitting every sport a little bit different, but, you know, yes, college baseball is older than it's ever been and more experienced. And, and I think, you know, ever more important is for you to do it the right way in your program, you know, and we are benefiting from, you know, our best players being loyal to our program. You know, we didn't, we didn't have any of our best players go in the portal this summer and they stayed, wow. and they, wow. they, they stay loyal to what we're doing and, and I respect them for it. And, and they're getting the benefit of it, of, you know, the positive side of, of not getting caught up in, you know, looking for the grass is greener because, you know, you, you play well enough. We all know that there are, there are opportunities out there. And, um, but I do respect our guys a lot because they stuck here, they stuck with us. And, and then we're able to roll out, you know, the most experienced and talented team, you know, that we've definitely had in my time here. And, you know, experience is second to none. You know, when you've got guys who have been through it, whether they failed or if they've had success, you know, if they apply it right, they have the right mindset as an older player, you know, that experience is always going to serve them. And I, and I think you're seeing that with Shamar Dalton and TJ Ash. TJ Ash, you know, has been in the program for four yeah. years yeah. and he's having his best career. He's having the best year of his career, you know, is super, super consistent, playing an unbelievable defense and center, you know, is really cut his strikeouts down over his career. You know, he's just, he's just doing everything right. And, and I think that's just a testament 
you know, to our staff and the school and the things we do to support these guys and, and make sure that we coach it the right way where, you know, they're, they're comfortable and they feel like they can succeed here, but when they don't do well, we're not set in an environment where, you know, it's, you know, baseball can be hard and it can become miserable if you make it miserable. And, and I think we've, we've hit the right nerve here in the program where the guys know we're going to give them their best, our best as a coaching staff. And, and I think that, uh, that they're definitely seeing the benefits of their own commitment to the program too right now. And, uh, A&T, Aggie Nation's in the building for anti baseball, man. You listen to what's going on, man. Uh, very excited about the start for North Carolina a and That's, that's very good to, to see. Uh, let me tell you, uh, if you guys get a chance, he mentioned TJ Ash, go out to a uh, War Memorial Stadium and watch him patrol center field. It's yeah. incredible. I mean, it's incredible. See him run down some of those balls. The guy is absolutely incredible center fielder. Uh, it's a joy to watch, man. You, you know, go stay an inning, two innings, just watch him patrol uh, yeah. center field. It's, it's well, and, he, and he's a, I was telling a couple of our freshmen the other day, I mean, just, you know, <clears throat> he wasn't much different than you his freshman year. You know, but you tack on three years of experience. He's played in, in two and really three different leagues. And he's he's the best version of himself in college baseball now, you know, and ultimately that's what you want. You know, you get juniors and seniors, you want them to be juniors and seniors and you need them to play like that. And, you know, fortunate for us, you know, our guys have really bought in and, and you know, are playing the best baseball, you know, of their careers right now. We had uh, Coach Ross on a couple of weeks ago, and he he, made, he used the term uh, re-recruiting. And you you mentioned you were able to keep your guys here. What's the key? Uh, because I feel like that's almost what coaches have to do now is also just kind of keep their guys back in the fold. Does the school sell itself? What keeps guys in the fold? Yeah. Uh, because it's certainly helped you guys to bring all those guys back. Uh, what keeps yeah. them in the fold? Well, I, I just – I mean, I – you know, you don't want to get into a, a back padding session. I mean, I don't know that we're better than anybody else. I mean, we just, you know, we just try to create an environment where we work hard, we set high expectations, um, and but yet we don't create an environment where they a player would want something somewhere else. I, I you know, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to say because you know, in this world, you could look up in two years and it could be the opposite, you know, and you, right. you don't keep all your best players, you know, I don't know. Uh, I just know that, and, and maybe as a product of this group, they're all loyal people to start. And um, I think that they could have tested those waters and probably found other things, but they didn't. And, and I think a lot of it just has to do with, you know, and, and every player is different, right? Every player, is, is, you know, it's all an individual decision. Um, but I think for us, it just boiled down to, you know, how we create the environment we create at the field every day. And they felt like, and I think our guys continue to feel like it's the best environment for them to be their best, you know, and it, it would be too much risk to try something else. Right. And so, and the great thing is for us, it's proven to be a success, you know, and if we weren't playing good baseball, if the guys that came back were not doing well, you know, you might be looking at a different story, but I think it has set a good tone for our program going forward that, you know, hey, I, you know, my name is Canyon Brown. I'm one of the best catchers in the country. I can come back and still accomplish all the things that that some people out there think you got to leave to do it. You know, he's doing it here and he's going to accomplish great things. You know, he's getting a ton of looks, got a chance to be a high draft again this year. And, you know, he didn't have to go anywhere else to do it. You know, he's just got to continue to grow and be his best his best player. Yeah, and you've had some guys that have gotten some great notoriety uh, coming out of HBCU. You think about Cam Jackson. You think about uh, Xavier Meacham. Some of these guys have been on big stages. And like you said, guys have been drafted out of this program. And so certainly, you know, Kevin Freeman, I think about, and uh, uh, some of those guys uh, yeah. in the past that have come out of this program. And so certainly it's a place where you can be seen and you can get a lot of great looks. Uh, yeah, and I know, think in, in baseball now, the way the the draft is in professional baseball, you, you got to go and you got to put up the numbers. It just flat out like it, you know, it's so, it's so based on analytics. Now the, the teams are all based, you know, so much on, on stats and, you know, uh, models and different things like that, that look at statistics. And, 
you know, if, if you're in the CAA, I think the CAA had 13 players drafted last year. The, uh, the third baseman of William and Mary was a, was a comp round or second rounder. So it's like, where else do you need to be? Right. If you want to, you want to get drafted, you want to get your best look, like play right here in the CAA and put up the right numbers and, and you're going to get every opportunity. So. Let's talk a little bit about the season. You guys have been great on the weekends at home. I mean, they're absolutely uh, outstanding. And uh, we had a lot of fun at George Mason, they, uh, you know, with the walk-off uh, home run yeah. and the comeback in the, in the eighth inning. I mean, uh, a lot of great things have, have uh, turned well. And you guys went down to uh, South Florida, played well down there. Uh, let me ask you about Coley Kilpatrick. Yeah. How important has his Friday starts been for you guys? And I kind of, you know, he's kind of a favorite, so I'm going to ask about him because he's one of my yeah. guys. But uh, but how how important has his Fridays been eating up some of those innings? Yeah. Kind of resetting your bullpen a little bit. Well, you, when you when you're going through and you're trying to figure out, all right, how do we build the rotation? Who do you pitch when? And you know, coaches all have different ideas on it. You know, you're well, you're going to play on Friday. You're going to face the best pitcher in the conference. Do you do you throw off on that day? Do you do that? And I've just never been a big believer in it. You know, and I went back, to be honest with you, I went back as we thought about building our rotation this year to 2018 when we started Tim Luth on Friday night. And Tim was was the most reliable person you could ever put out there. The team believed in him. He didn't have the best velocity, but you knew what you're going to get every week. And the team could count on what they were going to start every weekend with. And, and I think Coley has just, He's that same guy. He's a throwback type pitcher. Um, he's tough. He's got a super, super competitive edge to him. Um, you know, he's got his own persona and and the guys rally around him. And then you're like, all right, well, what better way can you start a weekend series with your most, arguably your most competitive guy um, who's going to get up there and just, he's going to give the whole kitchen sink to the other team and see what they can do with it. And and I think this year is a true benefit from last year. Again, you know, he 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 kind of got roughed up in some outings last year and, and had to, you know, really think about and work at what he's got to do to be better this year. And so, you know, there's just another tip on, you know, trust and experience and, you know, and then not getting caught up in velocity or, you know, what metrics say, like, He's just competitive. And so we know it, you know, going out tomorrow night, he's going to be hyper competitive. He's going to, he's going to throw strikes. He's going to throw competitive strikes. He's going to mix more than one pitch in the strike zone and he's going to give us a great chance to win. And so um, the team rallies around that, you know, they love him and they obviously have his back. And, and I think that's why you've seen the performances we've gotten, you know, this year from him and, and we'll continue to get from him. Great, great young man. Great, great young man. Yeah. No problem. Uh, let me ask you about another guy who's setting the table for you like a major D, man. Uh, Shamar Dalton. 20 yeah. straight games. Uh, he's reached base safely. 13 game hitting streak. How important has him has he been to the top of your lineup, just kind of getting that offense cranking a little bit? Well, I think Shamar is another great example of a guy who, same story as TJ, like, you know, didn't play his freshman year, you know, didn't play much his first year, but <clears throat> through his career started to figure out, you know, who he was as a player. And I think he really embodies what we preach offensively here. You know, um, he's a tough out. He He's never throwing a bats away. Uh, he bought in. We've got a two-strike approach that we put in here, and it's mandatory. Like, you either do it or you don't play. And he is one of the toughest outs that I've ever seen, you know, and he just – He's got a knack for setting the tone. I mean, that Sunday game at Charleston, we spent all BP batting practice trying to get these guys ready for a lefty who was going to mix in the zone. That that's a tough matchup sometimes when you got a lot of lefty bats in the lineup. And we really were working hard to get them ready. You know, lefties, you got to stay on the ball. We got to work oppo. Like this is an adjustment day. Like if we don't make an adjustment. You know, we're going to struggle to hit this lefty. And then he goes up there and just whacks the ball first pitch of the game opposite field. Exactly what we were preaching. And, you know, when you do that at the top of the lineup and you are a tough out, you know, he's not going to get a hit every time, but he runs hard. He's playing the best defense of his career. You know, again, it's the same thing as Coley. Like, can you, if you're the first guy off the bus, you got to set the right tone for the team. And 
and he does a great job for that. Uh, before we get into the weekend, I want to ask you also about Nagishi. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man, he can hit. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's not the speedster. You know, I've, I've you know seen around the base a couple of times, but man, he can hit the bay baseball. Uh, how important has he been? Uh, you know, graduate transfer. Uh, but how important has he been to just the middle of that lineup? Because, uh, man, he can put uh, bat to ball uh, yes. like nobody else. No, well, no that's an awesome, awesome story. Like uh, midsummer, talking to a coaching friend of mine, hey, I got this kid that's going in the portal, and, you know, I trust you, and, I, you know, I know he would hit for you if you get him. And and I was like, all right, like we'll take him. Like, you know, I trust him. He He's, he's like a good kid all he wants to do is hit like that. He's just like born to hit. And, you know, just there were some scenarios at, at middle where he wasn't going to get the at bats that, that he would potentially get for us. And um, he's just awesome, man. Like it just, you know, you talk about a kid from Tokyo, Japan who came to the United States to chase his baseball dreams. Right. And, you know, he's been living over here for eight to 12 months at a time on his own and just, just lives for baseball. I mean, this guy takes, you know, 200 dry swings a night in the parking lot of the hotel. I mean, mm. like the bat is in his hands 24 hours a day. And, you know, and I, I think he, he does. He's, he's got bat to ball. He lives for baseball. You know, he, he, he is an unbelievable defensive first baseman. For sure the best I've ever seen, um, you know, at just fielding his position. And, and um, he's just a joy to coach too because the guy plays the game with a – with a smile on his face that, you know, I think is just infectious. Right. And so it's been fun. You know, you got, you got different culture in the locker room, which has been great for the team to rally around. You know, there, there are things that we learn about his culture and the things that he does in baseball and, you know, and it just adds to the experience of obviously watching him play well, but, but also to be around, you know, a different brand of baseball, right. He had a different baseball upbringing than any of our players currently had. And um, and he's just been he's been a huge asset for sure. And he will continue to be. He's he's a tough out. He's going to hit some home runs. He's got home run power. But, you know, he just he just is, has a knack for getting hits. He, he doesn't swing and miss a ton. And um, and he's fun to watch. He, he definitely is a fun player to watch. Throwing the North Carolina a t head baseball coach Ben Hall. A few more shout outs here. Uh, Hans, uh, thank you for listening to us. Another War Boys Reference from A.T. Roy, so uh, that must be catching on. Shout yeah. out to the to the War Boys, no question about it. Ray Lenny uh, gives a go big Aggie, so thank you for watching. Uh, Ray, appreciate it, man. And Steve Duke, another uh, another Aggie. Um, just uh, wishing you guys all the best. I uh, love to see the thank love. You. Thank you. Thank you. Baseball, they absolutely deserve it. Seventeen and seven, two and one in, in in conference play. I feel like I could talk to you all day. I love talking baseball. It's just absolutely. Uh, a wonderful sport. Let's talk the weekend, though. Uh, yeah. You second annual uh, baseball reunion game coming up. Uh, you're gonna root. You're gonna celebrate the 1974 uh, MIAC Conference Championship team. I think. Yeah. Uh, see the sign there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the history of anti baseball. Is is fascinating to me because when I when I look into it, so many guys from here played in the Negro leagues. Uh, you guys went back to 1939 to kind of do some retro. Such yeah. a rich history uh, of AT baseball, probably playing it here at AT probably more than 100 years. Uh, how important is it for you to kind of look into the history of the program yourself and also kind of get the guys to understand the rich history of, of, of AT baseball? Yeah. Well, you got to know where you come from, for one, if you're going to know where you're going. And that that's part of where we went when we when, when we designed those road jerseys like you know what better way we had to do a new road jersey this year what better way to to honor the history of this program than to go find a an era team that 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 you could kind of honor in in your uniform and um i think the the uniform we patterned it after was like 1939 you know and you, you sit and think about how long ago that was like we we're playing you know, intercollegiate baseball in 1930s at North Carolina A&T. Like, that, that is a, an amazing stat just in itself, right? And, you know, we had – what we, we've had a – we had one of our players break the color barrier with the Cardinals, Tom Alton. Cardinals is right. 
some just amazing, amazing figures that have come through, you know, this program and we'll get to honor some of them this on Saturday, you know, Al Holland senior. And, you know, they'll, they'll talk about Mel Grooms and the years he coached here. Right. So, um, you know, I think baseball is America's pastime, right. And, you know, as, as important as all the other sports are, you know, baseball people are very loyal to, to baseball. And, and so it's important because again, like, as we grow, we obviously don't forget where we come from, uh, but we also are have been blessed with unbelievable opportunities that I remind our players every day. You know, you, we're in one of the top conferences in college baseball, and I could go talk to 10 alumni right now that played in the 90s that would give up anything to play in this league right now and this opportunity that our guys are blessed with right now because, you know, we get to go out every day on a huge platform and play against the best. And, and so, you know, I think when we wear those road jerseys, I told him you got a hundred years of, you know, support in this Jersey, like let's, let's go play better on the road this year. And, and, and I think it really resonated with the guys and uh, no better time to, to reflect on it and honor some guys than this weekend, um, you know, to see, you know, those guys come back to the park and, you know, relate with each other, have fun, talk, eat some good food and, you know, and obviously cheer the team on, see if we can't, you know, get a couple big wins against, you know, a traditional power in, in the CAA. Uh, Friday at 6, uh, Saturday at 2, the guys will be here having some fun. You mentioned good food. Uh, it's Aggie Land, man. It's always going to yeah, be good right. food when they, <laughs> when they fire up the grill and, and uh, everybody's always welcome and all that good stuff. And then Sunday at 1 o'clock, come out to the ballpark. These guys were great last year. The atmosphere – uh, during that uh, reunion uh, last year was absolutely great. Uh, you know, I think it really had an effect on the game. Uh, talk about the importance of these guys starting this up and making it an annual event. Talk yeah. about the importance of that for your program. Well, I mean, you want to get as many people in the park you can. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I'll be the first to say, like, this team's good. They're worth coming to see. And But uh, but you also want to continue to give your alumni an opportunity to come back and to to connect with each other. And, um, you know, Joe Hill was a big part of helping get that thing together last year and and and, and has helping with this. And um, <clears throat> hopefully we can get, you know, our first pitch banquet back up and running next year. You know, but uh, you just want to continue to create energy and excitement around the program, you know, especially when you've got guys that are out there representing the right way. And, that, and that's the biggest thing I would say, like, yeah, I can't tell you how many people have come up after watching our team play and like, man, I'm so impressed. You guys play the game the right way. It's it's like a throwback team. You know, they 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 will not quit. Uh, they they hustle every ball out. They run hard. We take extra bases. We, you know, we're we're playing a, a little bit of a throwback a back brand of baseball, and that's what's might be the most exciting thing for me because you know, I'm a baseball purist, and <clears throat> the game takes all kinds of turns, right? And they're focusing on all kinds of different things at different levels. But in the end, you got to run hard. You got to put the ball in play. You got to make routine plays. You got to pitch, you know, and throw strikes. <clears throat> and you've got to compete 27 outs, right? And I really do think that that's been a huge part of our success. We've got, you know, yeah. 30, they got 36 guys. We got a nine man lineup that's going out there. And, you know, even Tuesday night, I can tell you right now, that, you know, as that game got away from us in the middle of the game. We got a little out of character. We didn't make plays and pitched a little loose in the middle of the game, but they did not enjoy pitching to our lineup. That's a, our lineup's tough to pitch to, and they, they compete. And I think we had five or six at bats of 10 plus pitches of guys just fouling pitches off and finding a way on base. And, and that'll be a key for us this weekend. We, we get bases loaded. We got to cash them in. You know, we can't leave runners out there. We got to finish those innings, but. Uh, I think for me, it's a fun brand of baseball to watch. Yeah, somehow we had a rain delay. The base is loaded without rain, but yeah, Brian Holloway said that not a little bit. That, but <laughs> but uh, certainly a tough game up at uh, UNC. But they played uh, played very well and uh, certainly uh, got off to a great start up there. Shout out to Stephen uh, Haylord. He played on that '93 team uh, cool. that I believe beat Carolina. Uh, Milton stats. Uh, you know, said we have a talented club. So thanks for listening, Milton. I uh, love the um, the outreach, Lauren Walker, uh, as well as also watching us here. 
it is a shame that there's only one uh, HBCU still playing yeah. baseball in North Carolina. I think that is uh, uh, pretty sad. Hopefully, well, that I'll, I'll tell you that. that's one that's one reason we went down to Andre Dawson this year. You know, I, <clears throat> scheduling's tough nowadays, and then you're like, man, let, like I want to still play some HBCUs. I want us to be able to have that opportunity, but it's like you look around. There, there's no there's none near us anymore. So. Um, that was a good weekend for us, again, to test ourselves on the road, you know, go play the SWAC schools, which we've really never had a chance to. But I, I definitely enjoyed, you know, that weekend. I know our guys did, obviously, you know, winning a series down there and, and playing well, I think, was a good jump start, you know, to the season. No question about it. Only loss was to Prairie View, I believe. Yep. Believe it be Southern beat Grambling uh, as well. So uh, another great road weekend for North Carolina a and and certainly we'll be here. Before I let you go, Coach, uh, give us a little bit of a preview of UNCW. I know they got a big, big-time bat uh, yeah. in their lineup. Uh, kind of give us a little bit of what we can expect to see this weekend from the Seahawks. Yeah, just, I mean, a really well-built ball club. I mean, they, they're they in the same boat. They got a lot of their a lot of their best players back, right? They, you know, Tanner Thatch, uh, Marsh. You know, DiMartino, Croom. I mean, they've got a loaded lineup that is back and experienced. Um, they've got a bevy of, you know, arms that are going to be up in the low to mid-90s. And, um, you know, but, you you know, baseball is a stats game. You look into the stats, two very evenly matched statistical teams, really. You know, I think we're third in the league in pitching right now. I think they're fourth. You know, I think we're right in the same place with each other, you know, fielding percentage-wise and, we're a little ahead of them offensively, but I think they've gotten a little slow start offensively, which they really kind of picked it up this past weekend at Elon, you know, so, you know, it's a very, it's a dangerous lineup. You know, there's definitely some hitters in there that you get, you, you got to make sure you don't let beat beat you. Um, but again, it'd be the same message. I, I tell the team every day, we're the only team in the park. It doesn't matter what goes on here other than the way we play. And if we go out and play our brand of baseball, to the nth degree, then we're going to give ourselves the best chance to, to win. It really doesn't matter what what's on the other side. And I think, you know, if we – I have to stay consistent with that and not let it get bigger or less than it is. But really it is. That, that's that been the message every day. You know, let's beat them on the base paths. Let's beat them in our, our bunt game. Let's execute and let's fill the zone up on the mound and let's make routine plays and then let, let's just go out there and out hustle people. You know, I think we'll be okay, and I think the same same rules apply this weekend. If we do that, we'll be in great shape. No question. I like our lineup. I like Michael yeah. Logan and Nagishi and Kenyon Brown and Shamar yeah. Dalton. I mean, I'll take our guys uh, any day, uh, any time, and so certainly that's going to be an exciting ball game. And uh, we we haven't mentioned Trey Williams. Yeah, uh, I mean, you guys are doing well. Uh, one of the bigger line of bats in your lineup, a guy who can hit 350, 375. That, I, that's one thing I would, I would definitely say. I, I, that is one big proud thing that I would, I'm would i happy about. We we have done this. We've made it through this start with some injuries, and we've we've had some guys step up. You know, Devin Rodriguez has played outstanding <laughs> baseball here over the last three weeks and kind of thrust into duty. I mean, a good player has been around. And, you know, one of your best hitters go out and he's played an unbelievable second base and has actually, you know, I think he's hitting over 300. I mean, he's done a great job, you know, flipping that lineup over and being a competitive out. You know, he had one of the walk-off hit against George, I think it was George Mason maybe. Um, you know, so having other guys step up in other roles has been a big part of this success too. And, and in every team you have to have that because every year you're going to have injuries and you know, you need people to step up and, you know, I think we'll get Trey back in a timely fashion at some point and be excited to get him back into the fold. Um, you know, but but really proud of the guys for, you know, coming together like that and being able to, you know, go out there and win games, you know, no matter what happened. Next man up. Big, big weekend for Aggie baseball. They welcome in UNC Wilmington. First game uh, is Friday at 6 o'clock. You can watch that on uh, Flow Sports. You can watch all three games on Flow Sports, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, Corey Hodges and Corey Lima will bring the action to you. Saturday's big, big big-time event, second annual baseball reunion. Come out, support the team. It's going to be an electric atmosphere. We're going to need your help. Saturday, 2 p.m., and then the season series finale is Sunday uh, at 1 o'clock. So big, big, uh, big, big weekend for 
North Carolina ENT. So make sure you come out and, and enjoy it. Coach, I appreciate your time, man. You've been Thank very you. gracious. And uh, certainly we are looking forward to the completion of what could be a very, very exciting season. And so uh, thank you so much. Thank you. We're, we're, we're going to keep pushing. So thank you. Question. Coach Ben Hall, uh, North Carolina a and baseball. And I think we have with us Tawana Cook. Coming hey. in there. She is. Yeah. Hey, Brian. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing? Doing all right. How you doing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah, you can always trust a nigga gonna come in with the right gear. You already know. The red shirt. She <laughs> is ready. <laughs> you, try. you already know. <laughs> you already know. Tamana, how you doing? I'm good. Again, like I said, I'm blessed. Just you know, enjoying life. Um, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Listen, you gotta, you know, you're you're a proud uh, alum, and, and your ladies are doing it, man. I mean, yes. they are. Yeah, they are uh, They are making it through the WNIT. Mm-hmm. Definitely wanted to have you on because you know what this is like. I mean, yes, uh, you you have an idea of what this is all about and the excitement. You guys kind of did your thing on the road. They've been able to, to do it here at home in front of the home crowd. Yes. A couple of great crowds uh, yes. that have shown up uh, at North Carolina a and Yeah, no question. And, and Aggie Nation, if you're out there, you guys have done – Man, yes. a bang it up job. A it yeah, it, it means a lot. And, and I talked to the ladies, uh, some of the ladies, and, and it, it means the world to them that mm-hmm. uh, that, that uh, folks have showed up. 4,000 against UNCG, uh, another 32, 3,300 uh, against Old Dominion. And so the crowds have been electric. They've been mm-hmm. great. The fans have just been like bananas. They always show up. The Aggies yeah. always show up. It don't matter. Yeah. On the road, we always show up. <laughs> <laughs> always show up. Uh, but I feel like this has been a different kind of crowd. Like they've just kind of been energized. Uh, yeah. They changed and, it to club forward. See, when you know when I was there, we was the dog pound. They changed the dog, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no question about it. Uh, so I, I wanted to, you know, take you back about fourteen years. Uh, you know, it's been hard to believe it's been 14 years. I know, I know, I know. I think about that. <laughs> yeah, like that's crazy. But you guys, your your circumstance, you guys lost in the tournament like this team, but you guys mm-hmm. were the number one seed. Yes. Uh, and I think it was South Carolina State that upset you in that, yes. in that first yeah, round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, talk about that moment a little bit, because I think these ladies didn't quite know if they were going to make it postseason, but you guys pretty much knew as the regular yes. season champions that you were in, correct? Yes. Yes, we did. So um, we already had that, like, you know, when you finish, well, back in the day in the MEAC, um, when you finish in your conference or you're the conference champ, if you do not make it or get the bid to the NCAA, you automatically get a WNIT bid. So we knew that. We were kind of disappointed. And I think because, okay, so, you know, since my freshman year we were winning, so that was in our first go around. I remember I cried like crazy. <laughs> And I was like, what? And then we went to the WNIT. And then, so it's like I kind of already knew that. So my senior year when we um, lost, um, it kind of gave us motivation because we knew we shouldn't have lost. So the biggest thing is, like, even though we knew that wasn't our goal, but we was like, okay, well, we still can make history because that was our biggest thing, especially, like, with Mona, Nuki, Shantara, Lanise, um, even G, because G came in kind of young, Jaleesa Sams. Um, our biggest thing was making a name for ourselves after – my best friend, A.B., my sister, and uh, <laughs> Brittany Taylor James. Because, um, you know, everybody was like, well, what are they going to do? What are they going to do without Amber Bland and Brittany Taylor James? Yeah, yeah. That's why we wanted to come back strong um, our senior year. And uh, we won the conference, and we really had high hopes. Um, I think if we would have just got past that game, we definitely would have won another, you know, MEAC tournament. But, you know, things happen for a reason. God still blessed us, and we made history, make it to the Sweet 16 um so that's kind of how that 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 panned out so so you guys get wake forest it's a big name no question Mm -hmm. about it everybody knows wake forest uh and what was the mindset i remember the thing i remember the most about that game is that the goal was nine feet uh, it measured out nine feet two inches, right? Right. So we got two free throws to start the game. I think Amber Calvin hit two free throws, right? Uh, to start the game, so we were like up to nothing. I don't, I don't think they ever caught up with us after that or whatever. Nope, nope, nope. nope. <laughs> I think we had to lead the entire game. Am I? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I we, think we, we, we had the lead in. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were just on fire, and I forgot about Amber Calvin. That's my other little sister from Vietnam. Um, she, I mean, 
it's because she wanted to come to A&T to play with me. And I think it kind of broke her heart um, that, you know, it kind of, we, we kind of just lost that momentum that we had at one point. Like we just automatically knew we were going to win. We didn't have the big head, but we were just like, this is, this is our, this is what we're destined to do. This is our goal. We got it. I mean, everything is in line. We have everything we need to win. So I think that motivated Amber too, because she went crazy in the tournament too, as well. So it's like, when we got there, and we weren't scared outside of us just making sure we knew we had a new goal set. We wanted mm -hmm. to kind of like let everybody know we weren't done. But we played, being in Greensboro, you have so many colleges. We weren't scared. We played them over the summer. Like when we got Wake Forest, it was like, we know half of their starting lineup. And then, you know, <laughs> Woody's sister, um, uh, she played Cecily Ray. Um, so we played with these girls over the summer and we would beat them over the summer and pick up. But of course, they always would like just say, oh, whatever. You know, y'all go to NT. This is just pick up. But we we still always knew we were better than them. And so that chip was on our shoulder too because they always, you know, kind of downplayed um, HBCUs and ANT. So even over the summer, we're fighting like crazy. But definitely during the WNIT, even with Charlotte, because some, you know, we know some girls from there. Like it's a, you know, North Carolina is a basketball state. So we play whether that's AAU or over the summer when we travel or people come home and, and you know, work with AAU teams. So it's like we had another thing to prove, like, we're just not a &T. We're ballers, too. We can hang with the rest of them. So that helped us a lot. No question. We're talking with Tweet Cook, Tawana Cook. Uh, certainly one of uh, – this is actually really fun for me because you get the chance to watch some really, really talented players, and you, you get to cover them over the years. Yeah. And I got to tell you, like, you were one of my favorites because <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anybody with the basketball in their hand as fast as you. They could go <laughs> from one end of the floor to the other yes, yes. as fast as you dribbling a basketball. I mean, it was absolutely uh, amazing to, to watch. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey to a and and kind of what uh, encouraged you to kind of come here uh, because you had a great career, second time. I don't think I think people know you kind of the all time assist leader, but your second all time is scoring. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, like you were yeah. the ultimate combo guard. Uh, I think you yeah. moved to the <laughs> when Amber came in. Uh, so, uh -huh. talk about your journey here to to A and T. Um, well, in fact, I, I grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I started off in track. That's where that fastness came from. So, <laughs> track was my first love, but. Um, I fell in love with basketball as well, playing in the neighborhood, and then I got into AAU and things. So it was always track and basketball. So around my senior year, I had a you know few scholarships for track, like the UNCW. They were a pretty good track um, program. Um, and then I had a few for basketball. But what got me to a &T was Coach Rob. He's from Fayetteville. He calls me hometown. Mm -hmm. um, that's my dog. He actually helped recruit me. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details because it may make some people <laughs> mad, <laughs> but I, I, I really, I, um, I didn't know I was being recruited by a and I would just say that, um, um, a lot of people, not my family, my family was always supportive, but like a lot of my coaches, AAU or even high school coaches will let me see the letters that I wanted to see sometimes or let me know coaches that, um, were interested in me. So I was actually at a rival basketball game and coach Rob came up to me and was like, Tawana, tweet. I'm like, who is this tall man? What are you? Who, who is he? <laughs> but of course, he had all A&T stuff. He was like, I, you ain't get my letters or nothing. You, you don't know I'm trying to recruit you. I was like, no, sir. I did not know. <laughs> and then he was like, he started telling me about A&T. He said, would you be interested in coming like for a visit? And I was like, of course. Like, because I already knew like, that's why I was so close with the band. I had a lot, a lot of people um, in Fayetteville went to A&T with a band scholarship or to join the band, a couple of Golden Delights and a couple of band members. So I've heard of A&T because a lot of my friends were going in there and would hype it up. And I grew up around the band in Fayetteville because Fayetteville State, we will always have a homecoming. My dad is from Fayetteville. So my mom went there on a basketball scholarship um, and that's kind of how they met. So we always would go to Fayetteville State homecoming. So I hung around, like, I just love music. But um, so I went on a visit, met Coach Bibbs and Coach Robin. It just felt like home, like regardless of whatever other college. I was like, no, this is where I want to go. And they were like, yeah, you know, we're trying to turn the program around. Uh, we have some other recruits coming in with you. We have some transfers, which was Amber and um, Brittany Teller James. And they told me I could start. It was like, you won't have to you won't have to work for this <laughs> position. It's already yours. As long as you keep it, as long as you know, you be the player that we know you can be. 
then, you know, the starting position is yours. So, of course, if I went somewhere else, I would have to work for it or prove my worth. So I just love, like, when I got there, like, how it felt like home and being around my people. And um, when I met the team, everybody had one goal. It was fun. Um, and that's the biggest thing for me, like, family and fun and just love. Like, you get so much love at A&T, and everybody shows so much love. So that's how I ended up at a and I dropped everything and said, I'm coming. I <laughs> and they <laughs> sent me my letter of intent, like later on that, later on that week, and I signed it. And I had a couple people mad at me, but I always tell tell people to this day that was the greatest decision I've ever made. I won three oh, championships. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, made history, won one um me at championship. Like, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Uh, without question. I mean, you you are when the story of women's basketball in North Carolina A&T is written, you can't write it without Tawana Cook. I mean, certainly you put your your staple on this on this program, and uh, certainly you guys were the first that kind of won those first two WNIT games. That was mm-hmm. historic. HBCU uh, women's program had not done that mm-hmm. before, and uh, you guys kind of put yourselves uh, on the map. You mentioned Charlotte. Now these young ladies are going in. They play Troy uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Friday, 7 p.m. Uh, they, they're saying wear gold, so wear gold. Uh, okay. <laughs> but wear gold tomorrow. Uh, but you guys are you guys go down to Miami, you got a flight, okay. and you got a chance to to knock off an ACC team. Take me through that game and kind of what it was like to try to I think it was 84 77 with the final. Yes, yeah, did, I think but, we lost uh, like five or seven. Um, and then a- Amber ended up, you know, um, Amber Calvin, because I got to be clear with AB and Amber. Um, <laughs> Calvin, she got an injury that game, too, because we was kind of hanging with them. Um, but so the mindset was still like we were on a mission. Um, everybody still had the same goal. Um, it was a little bit different, I guess, because it traveled a little bit further. Um, the game mm-hmm. was there. Um, it was a way bigger like that. The Miami Stadium, I will say, was a little bit bigger, like for their school. Um, but we still could hear our crowd um, and we just, you know, try to fight. We just fell short. Um, but the mindset was just always there to still try to go in, not be intimidated. Um, it was, you know, ACC at that time when you hear that, it was a little bit, you know, Wake Forest, like I said, we knew them, but they were kind of like, you know, at the bottom of it. Miami at that time, they had like a, a you know, a, a couple of good point guards. They had kind of made some upsets in the ACC. So we were reminded about that, but we still tried to make sure we fought hard. Um but we got a couple of injuries, and then Mona got in foul trouble. Um, so I think that kind of played a part. But we 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 did what we could um, to make sure that we gave it and left it on the floor. Um, and I mean, that's all we can you know ask for. I wish it would have been a different outcome because we just you know we was just on the road getting so much praise and just. It was a new experience too, like just to be able to travel, um, you know, further and play different teams that we always wanted to play. Um, Cause you know, at A&T, sometimes it was hard to get the teams that you wanted to play. Yeah. Um, so that was my first time in Miami. So I enjoyed that. Um, and of course I knew a couple of people on the team. Um, so it was just a great experience. It was a great experience. No question about it. Yeah, what sticks out the memory in my head is Amber went down, Amber Calvin with a ACL, yeah. which was, People don't know, like she had one in high school. That's what was so heartbreaking uh-huh. uh, about that, uh, that she went down with the, the another ACL injury. But fortunately, she was able to come back and play again mm-hmm. uh, a little yeah. in her A&T career. But, uh, yeah, that was the she tragic part about that game. game. Brian, she was, to, <laughs> she was like, no, she was trying to hop around. And she was like, no, you got to sit. Like, she, I mean, she still scored, like, until we finally tell her to sit down because she was trying to hop around. It wasn't until after the game we knew she tore it. Because she's still uh, trying to play. Yeah. And I remember Jaleesa had a good game. For some reason, I remember yeah. she she scored a lot of points in yeah. the game. Uh, and she had a pretty good game. But uh, certainly was a, it was an outstanding run. Patricia Cage Bibbs uh, was the head coach. And uh, certainly it was an outstanding run. If you had advice for the young ladies for tomorrow, knowing that you guys were trying to get into that, that, suit, uh, that Elite Eight WNIT, what would it be? Uh-huh. What would be, what would be uh, your advice for uh-huh. The advice I will uh, be like I would give to them is just to stay coachable and to stay together. Um, I do recall um, that Miami game. Um, some of our bench players kind of fell apart along with us, like you know, like clashing heads, and then we got it back together because I think we were so a little bit got we started getting nervous and scared. 
But if we would have kept our composure like we did for um, the Charlotte game and for the Wake Forest game, um, if we remained calm and played our game, we would have been fine. If we would have listened to the coaches, which we did. But, you know, of course, when you're on the court, you like, you know, coach, no, you don't see this. The coach is like, no, we do see it. So it's like trying to battle that. And, of course, as a point guard or shooting guard and as a leader, I had to be that one to kind of bring everybody back because I understand what my teammates were saying, but I also understood what the coaches were saying because I was always like the middle, middle person. So although you do see different things, but you got to figure out how to make it come together. So I think if they remain coachable and then they also still stay true to them, play their game and stay together, they won't have any issues. Because I think that's what I – because, I, you know, I've been paying – I went to the one game, but I watched one online, um, and I just noticed that they kind of keep their composure and they listen to coach and they look at coaches in the huddle. When they zoom in in the huddles, you see them looking. So um, we all need each other. So it's not going to be coaches versus players. It's not going to be players versus coach. It's the team. So um, I think if they do those two things, they'll be fine. Outstanding. Tell Lead eight, that's right. Talking to Tawana Coach has been a pleasure. Uh, all the memories yeah. are flowing back in my head. Uh, I know. And Brian, you was, yeah, yeah. yeah. was always there with us. He was always there with us. Uh, uh, Jay Sparrow. Jay <laughs> uh, Sparrow with us. So he's an ANT Sports Hall of Famer. Many people hey. consider him the best men's basketball player of all times. And uh, yes. certainly when you uh, – you think about anti women's basketball, you think about the Angela Hills, you think about the Brittany Taylor James, the Amber uh -huh. Blands, uh, all those all those folks uh, that, that were outstanding. But you got to put Tawana Cook in there. Have you ever thought about yep. that? You could be a <laughs> Don't Sports Hall of Famer. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I, 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 everybody always said they call me Hall of Famer and all this stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll see. I mean, when ANT is ready, you know, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> she I was certainly one of those jackets, Mr. Sparrow. I see y'all at all the games and stuff. Y'all have the jackets, um, Miss Johnson. You know, Samara Johnson. She's always supportive, um, and stuff like that. Even when I was there, because we're both from Fayetteville, like alumni, like we we really truly love you guys, and that's what makes us give back too, because we saw the love and support. Um, so we try. That's why I loved when Jaleesa was still coaching and stuff. Um, I got into education, so I thought about coaching, but um, I ended up going the teaching route. Now I'm a principal, so I still kind of advise and help um, the young the young people. So, um, you know, one day if I can't get one of those Hall of Fame blazers, I definitely would <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so put in the I think all you gotta oh, you do is apply because the numbers are there. No question about okay. it. Okay, <laughs> numbers are there. The championships are there. Uh, no question about that. And so uh, you are like uh, you are truly deserving of it. I think all you have to do is put your name in the hat. And I think, uh, you know, that's going to happen uh, yeah. for you. You mentioned being a principal. Take us through what, what's what's Tawana Cook doing now? One of the best point guards in, in school <laughs> history. Uh, what What is what is she up to now? I think you have a you have a, a grad degree. I mean, a, a Ph.D. is. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, you're a doctor. so I, have, I have, well, no, not doctor yet. Um, I, I was about to do my doctorate, um, but then I got into a program. Well, let me back up. So um, <laughs> when I came back from overseas, I went to um, back to a um, and got my master's in teaching physical education while coaching at Bennett College. And that's when I, you know, was loving coaching and stuff like that. Um, at that time, Coach Bibbs kind of recommended me. Um, cause, uh, coach Williams, I don't know if you remember, he kind of coached with us for like one year and he went over to Bennett college and he was looking for an assistant coach. And at the time she, um, had all her coaches. So she was like, you know, why don't you go over there and you're in school? Um, so I tried that out and I loved it. Um, but when I started teaching, I was still coaching at Bennett, but then, um, my love for students, I kind of got swayed it. Like people were like, you know, you're, you're really good and you're a really good leader. And that probably came from me being a point guard, um, and being like a captain at A&T, they was like, you know, you should go into leadership. So then I went to uh, get my master's um, in um, educational leadership. And now I'm assistant principal at Jamestown Middle School. I've been there. And this is my sixth year and I love it. Um, just impacting not only students, but adults, like, you know, still kind of instilling what I, I, I got at A&T. Um, we're a big family show love. Um, it'll always come back to you. We have a lot of Aggies in the building um, <laughs> at um, Jamestown Middle. Uh, every homecoming. I mean, every Monday is College Mondays at the middle school because we try to be a college-going culture. Um, so we all Aggied out. But during homecoming week, 
it's definitely always and i have students that come they'll be like aggie fried miss cook because they <laughs> <laughs> i'm like of course aggie fried so you know that's how i ended up becoming a principal and i love it i love it i love impacting and helping um you know shape the world um i also help out with our basketball team i can't coach because that's um just a part of my position because i have to maintain the building but i'm at practices i'm at every game i'm coaching them girls and boys um they come to me sometimes i leave and go talk to them on the sideline <laughs> like i'm the coach <laughs> that shit, right uh, <laughs> So I'm probably the only principal that do that, but I just got to do it. <laughs> yeah, sister, so proud, so proud. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, got your, your education at A&T and, and mm -hmm. went and got a more uh, uh, grad degree and, and all those kind of things. And you are the epitome of what it means to be a student athlete. And I think people really love hiring student athletes because of their commitment, because they know yeah. they're going to put in 100 percent. And uh, certainly that was what you did here in North Carolina A&T. And so uh, no you. question about it. And uh, certainly hope to see you in the building tomorrow, uh, yeah, 7 yeah, o'clock yeah. start. Uh, we're, we're excited. We want to, you know, I think the goal is 5,000. You know, yeah. I think that I'm being be, there with my goal. Now you tell me to wear gold because, you know, I'll wear gold. gold. They, they tell me that's what they so I've been reading online what all day is to wear gold. So okay. uh, make, sure you, make sure you have your gold on and, you know, you have your, your cheering and get yep. your voice ready. You know, uh, Troy's going to be a very uh, tough opponent. they like to get uh -huh. up and down. And so, you know, we, we're going to be uh, going to be a tough one for us. But uh, I think Aggie Nation is worth about 10 yeah, points. Yeah, I'm telling you. Know? you. Uh, it <laughs> is. It's going to help. It helps. It's going to yeah. shake them, too, because it gives us momentum. Yeah. Um, and one thing I miss is the band. I have not seen the band at the game, but like I'm telling you, when we heard Smash, that before every game. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But I know it's, I think they got Aggie Fest this week. So, I don't know, maybe they can't, but. Um, but the girls are still being hyped. So the crowd, we definitely, like, if we show up, I think it, it definitely helped the girls. It definitely give us an extra 10 points. Yeah, no question about it. No question about it. Shout out to Bruce Jenkins, another A&T Sports Hall of Famer. Uh, Aggie Pride, back to you, Bruce. Aggie uh, Pride. <laughs> no question. Uh, hopefully to see, to see everybody maybe come in from out of town. If you can't come in, Flow Sports uh, will be the option. Arlene Mitchell, Donald Ware uh, on the call tomorrow night. Uh, I just want to ask you before I let you out of here, man, you think about uh, – you know, this is going to be the good old days too. When we're going to look back on this team and and really consider how great it was. Uh, the April McCray teams were uh -huh. outstanding. You know, no question about it. Uh, Channing Scott, their, their teams was uh, outstanding. But when you think about yes. those, uh, those teams with Amber Bland and Brittany Taylor James and all those kind of things, those memories, uh, great great teams. What comes to to mind? Uh, Lamona Small, I can't forget her. She was uh, outstanding. Yeah, oh, Philly. Uh, yeah, uh, as well. Uh, what kind of what kind of comes to your mind when you think about those things? Um, just family, like it just just family. Like A and T is really a fan. even alumni. Like it's alumni that I still talk to today. Um, but when I think of team, like those girls, like it was just family and love. Like it, we all had one goal. We all had a mission. Um, and I think like it has helped us, you know, we still got a group chat, even if we don't talk every day, if someone has a baby or if someone, you know, has a major accomplishment, we just shoot it in the group checks. Even if it's like two months or a month later, and we all celebrate like, yeah, that's cool. Or somebody gets married, we all get invited. Um, but the first thing that comes to my mind is I would say blue and gold family. Like those are my, my family for life. Even the people like I still like Brian, you see when I came in, I, I smile from ear to ear. Like it just brings you so much joy because it was a time to be alive. It was a great time. Like it was, it was a, great, was a time. great time. A great time. <laughs> I think when I got there in 2006, from 2006 to 2010, I'm trying to tell you it was a great time and everybody was family. You can go to Miss Wallace. Like she was instrumental in, in, in there. Like you like the, even the twin darling i remember seeing them when they were seniors and then they still came back and that kind of helped me want to come back like it's just you just don't want to leave that place so it's like it's family yeah no question i saw uh tracy king up at the tournament uh she played oh, yeah. basketball here and the tracy hughes i believe is now uh -huh. uh, all these last names have changed yeah. uh, over the years but uh -huh. uh, you know and she mentioned uh she was 32 years old. It's just for one, it makes you feel old, but two, it makes you feel proud to see them doing well. She has a uh -huh. child and a baby 
Uh, and so, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just like, wow, these, these kids grow up, you see them mature, you see them go from young freshmen to mature young women, mature young men. And uh, it's just a joy to watch. And it's just a, like you said, when, the, when I see you and I see uh, when Amber came back for the Hall of Fame, yeah. Smile uh-huh. because uh, right, <laughs> you know, it's, it's an absolute family. Uh, you, you were together for four years, and you got to mm-hmm. know these young kids, and to see them grow into uh, outstanding uh, members of society. Man, what else more could you ask for? So, yeah. uh, yeah. thank y'all because y'all y'all give us that you know that that hope. Like y'all seen a lot in us that we even sometimes didn't see. So just you guys being around them, and you know just 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 motivating us and just showing us so much love and just letting us know that you can do this and looking up to us as a higher standard standard um it really pushed us so we thank y'all too like the staff there um and just yeah y'all are a big part of it too so we appreciate y'all more than you know thank you so much tomorrow night yep tomorrow pat corbett club corbett greatest players in North Carolina a and history. I think she's going to be in the building. We need about uh, 4,999 more uh, in the building. Right. Every all day long. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited about it. The tickets are selling fast. Get in, get in quick. Uh, Troy is the opponent, 7 p.m. Friday, wear your gold, all that good stuff. Be excited. Be amped. It's going to be a great atmosphere, and we'd love to see these young ladies. Uh, we 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 love to see that Tawana and her group made it to the to the Super 16, and hopefully they can go even further. And that's yes. what it's about: just continuing to grow, yes. continuing that's to get right. better. And uh, we're we're all rooting for you guys tomorrow night. Uh, Aggie Nation, thank you for joining us again. Tweet. Hope to see you down the road. Uh, so proud of you and what yes, you've become. Yes, yes. And uh, we uh, hope to see you next time on the Aggie Podcast. Take care.